Welcome to Great Talk and Entertainment. I'm your host, KJ, and this is the podcast where we review movies and TV shows from all your favorite superheroes, including Marvel Comics and DC Comics and much more. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Great Talk and Entertainment official channel. Let's go, baby! I would like to wish everybody a happy New Year's and I hope whatever goal you guys have that you're going to try to achieve in 2023, I hope you achieve it. I hope you guys stay positive, put in the work, and just like I am trying to for this channel, for this brand, Great Talk Entertainment. So let's all just stick together and achieve our goals for 2023. Now, This is a review of Marvel's Phase 4, the MCU Phase 4 review. And this is a spoiler, so if you have not seen any of them, you better go watch them, because this I'm going to spoil a lot, so that's your warning. Now, before we get into it, I just want to say please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Great Talk and Entertainment official channel. Subscribe, hit that notification button, it would help my channel grow, so thank you. So, let's get into it. Now, with the MCU, I'm going to start off with the closing chapter. Uh, Black Widow, Wakanda Forever, Thor Love and Thunder, Loki Season 1, uh, Hawkeye, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and WandaVision are the uh, shows that have a closing chapter meaning to them because these are the still the character, surviving characters that had interaction with Thanos or they discover they were supposed to like Loki for example and what I what I think about is I think this was very important to do and this is also the closing chapter of passing like the mantle to a new person a new character to continue it on in the MCU uh Phase 4 was definitely a big risk. They totally hit different stories, but they did give us those closing chapters for it. So, for example, like, with Black Widow, that was was a very important movie. Obviously, it wasn't, like, the closing chapter after Endgame, but it it, it was a character that needed its origin story to be told, so people can definitely appreciate... Uh, Black Widow and then just watch that mantle be passed on to the next generation to tease like the Young Avengers and you know I think that's really awesome I think the Die Hard fans really appreciate that movie and just to see that character grow and change that character was as important as Iron Man, Captain America and I just think that's really awesome that they definitely did that solo film Wakanda Forever definitely definitely a closing chapter this film had so much going on but it was such a great movie I just think that again they're moving on from Thanos they're moving on the snap the gauntlet they're moving on from all that because to make the next chapter the new chapters the new stories the new big bad villain you gotta you gotta step away from trying to connect everything to Thanos in any type of way now there's exceptional characters to do that and a lot of them aren't gonna be like like the new characters that they introduce in a live action they're not gonna have that they don't have that interaction with Thanos and what it, I really enjoyed those though for like Thor Love and Thunder again we we see Thor get so far and I know here's the thing just to kind of clarify I'm not going to talk about news or rumors I will discuss like some of the things that people have said or you know disagree with or have doubts or whatever negative way right but with like Thor, because that's that's the one that people kind of bring up is they want Thor to be a, a serious Thor, 
And that's just people who have, like me, who read a lot of comic books, and they understand that Thor is more of a serious god than um, seeing how he was in Thor 1, Thor 2, and 3, and in the fourth film. But I think the idea is now since they told the story because you gotta think this is the cinematic universe this was a very important to show Thor being immature having these like life lessons uh, being humbled getting his ego checked understanding that you know for him to carry the mantle of his father Odin uh, it was a big responsibility and then just obviously he lost Asgard he lost his dad his sister uh, he, he lost his brother and he doesn't know that he doesn't know about Loki in season one he doesn't he lost you know he lost Jane Foster he lost to Thanos and he was dealing with depression and you know he let himself go I mean this is what this is a story that needed to be told, but this helps to get Thor to be that quote unquote serious Thor where you, if they can want to continue making Thor movies with Chris Helmsworth, which I can imagine, but this also shows that now he, they can do the serious because he needed to learn. Now he has like life experience. So now he can be that Thor that people want to see or hoping to see. So I think that's this is a great positive story. That's why I really enjoy Thor Love and Thunder because just like, like Wakanda Forever and Black Widow, they introduce us to new characters. Also, like I said, they're, these characters have interacted with Thanos, but now they can move on and do more stories that is about like Thor that's about Black Panther or, or the Black Widow uh, era with the Red Room and like you, you, we got Taskmaster you know we, we're, we're, we're getting a new side of Thunderbolt Ross we're so used to seeing him just being the guy that let's get the Hulk and lock him up or you know let's, let's uh, own all the superheroes and only decide when they get to be superheroes you know this is him uh, getting uh, an another way, you know, this character. I'm not talking about the actor. The actor who played him has passed away, and whoever who will play Thunderbolt Ross, this is again, they have they have to change it. They have to move on now. They can't connect everything with the Thanos. Uh, you, they can always with Thunderbolt Ross particularly. They can always always go back to those the Hulk film with Ed Norton. They can always go back to Civil War, Captain America Civil War, and so forth. That that's all fine and dandy, but now we get to finally see like him be the Red Hulk. If because you know they're also teasing the Thunderbolt team, which is an important thing I think, and it's it's definitely going to be fun. But for them to tell those great stories that people have read comic books about or make YouTube videos, including myself, like. For them to tell those stories, they can't always go back to the snap. You know, the, the snap has people have, they're trying to show you that those characters have moved on, and now here's some new stories. Now you get ready for the new big bad villain. And that's what uh, the closing chapters of these. When you get to like Falcon, the Winter Soldier, Loki season one, and WandaVision. Uh, see, they're all season one, obviously. I just want to make that clear. And Hawkeye as well. Uh, you get uh, new characters. Obviously, again, new characters introduction. Which, there you got Kate Bischoff. You got Wanda's kids. You got, let's see, Hawkeye, Hawkeye Clint Barton being a mentor. These are characters who don't have Thanos connections, but they definitely are telling a new story about them. We saw with Wanda, let's start with WandaVision. We saw Wanda go th and they continue it through Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, of course. She can just say, okay, her thing is getting her kids back. That's more important than her. And this is how she's moving on from 
Thanos in the snap. That's this her having her kids back is more important. But now that's that gives Marvel Studios and any director if they're going to make another Wanda project with Vision, whether it's season 2 or just a solo film, right? Now they can like not really highlight so much about Thanos or the snap, just the aftermath of Thanos basically. You know, they can explore her using the word mutant, making Wanda more of a mutant, interacting with the X-Men, like Deadpool, Wolverine, Storm, Cyclops, right? You can see her dad, um, Magneto, you know, how, you know, they can, they can do that now because Marvel wants to move on from Thanos, and I know I'm just dropping Thanos' name here and there, but I'm trying to make the point of just the move on. This is a new life, a new chapter, new layers to that character. Uh, same thing with Loki. Loki in season one was about him being getting humble, his ego checked, and he saw the future. But now, when we get to season two this year, and Loki season two, you're going to see Loki be the hero, but see if they kept him going with Thanos' fate it takes away certain stories but now they're not again they're now they can tell these amazing stories so that's why I really like phase four it was closing chapter and now we have these new chapters so Hawkeye is a new chapter Shang-Chi is a new chapter internals is a new chapter. She-Hulk, Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and WandaVision as well. So, uh, again, any char Marvel character that's the OG Avengers that dealt with Thanos, they close the chapter. But now let's talk about these new characters. So, let's start with the Internals. So, the internals was more about explaining why they don't interfere. Yes, they mentioned Thanos, but they explained very clearly why they don't interfere. Because that's not what they're supposed to do. The Celestials, uh, you know, tell them when they can and can't because there's consequences. And with a lot of people a lot of people have there's it's a mixture of how people feel about that film but I liked it I like how the internals were played out and to me that makes sense if if this is all they knew and they thought that was their purpose that makes sense cuz they're not they're not hu they're not humans as we are they're like they're kind of like Star Lord, but they don't have an Earth parent. They have a celestial parent in a way. And you, you see how the celestials work. And obviously, celestials have been talked about through Marvels before Phase Four and after, obviously, like, you know, Thor Love and Thunder mentions the celestials. And obviously the Guardian Galaxy still are. But these are characters, uh, the internals are characters that, you know, it's a challenge, but it's different. They're, that was the most different Marvel film you can imagine. But it's a film that I think we needed. And I, to, to me, honestly, people are going to really appreciate that film later on down the line. Because it has, it's there. It, that film's gonna have a huge payoff at the end with a lot of their stories and the plot, loose plot holes. But it's very important to hold off on that because I think these characters are gonna be more meaningful and they will now they know the truth about the celestials, right? And now, now they're gonna step in when they can, when they need to. And, you know, will they deal with Kane the Conqueror? Probably. I mean, that's that's the thing, I think. And 
right now it's uh, well, if they, I, th- I think they should make a number two for internals too. I think, I think it will cover that. And obviously, there's this giant celestial that's on Earth, and it's obvious. And that's an important key factor for many future Marvel films, with like the X Men, Wolverine, Deadpool, all like it, it's that's a huge key point. And that's just one big giant seed that this exists. Like, I know a lot of people are like, how come nobody's mentioning it? Well, <laughs> because right now it's not a, they're not like Iron Man where they can just access that. They're not like Captain America where he can get his information. So how do they get their information if they don't have it? Uh, even with like Spider-Man No Way Home. Doctor Strange made that spell where everybody's gonna forget about the identity of Spider-Man which nobody remembers now so nobody knows that Peter Parker is Spider-Man now what does that have to do with the internals and all that well the idea is this is for one it it explains that even Spider-Man doesn't have the Iron Man tech now he doesn't have the Stark tech as far as I know, because in No Way Home, they showed him making a suit out of, with a sewing machine. So it means Spider-Man's back to basic in, in his own way. And I think that's what it needed, right? I think that's what we all need. It's, it's, it's a new story. It's, it's the to help Spider-Man be told again, obviously. I mean, there's there's that, but... They can finally do stories that people may want to see. Uh, obviously, with like the Venom, the Symbios, but just imagine Spider Man with the Young Avengers. Spider Man being the leader of the Avengers, that's that's the thing, you know. Uh, this helps lead to like a live action Miles Morale and all that. And that's, I think that's what. I think that's what Marvel wanted to go anyway with as far as Spider-Man really but this gives a clean slate of a new story of a new saga basically and and that's why it's like that because if you look at like a She-Hulk I the reason why I really like She-Hulk and I think it's a beautiful series and I would recommend anybody to watch that show I I take away the cinematic universe take away the connection to it I think that show was so great I think a lot of people would just enjoy it just to watch it and it makes sense why She-Hulk doesn't know Thanos because she doesn't she never in- interacted with Thanos and her story is her just being herself Jennifer right and she just wants to be Jennifer who was just going to be a lawyer, have a regular job. Being a lawyer is not regular, but, you know, nine to five type job type is what I'm trying to get at. But now, you know, when she met Matt Murdock, a.k.a. Daredevil, now she you're watching her grow into her she-hole. Not, like, physically, but the idea of how to balance being a lawyer and being a vigilante. That's where they were going, that concept. Because it, it, you get to watch her be immature and then watch her mature in it because she has a lot to learn. And she has her cousin to be the mentor. So could she be in the Young Adventure? Avengers? Young Avengers? Yes. But could she be in the new and just the regular Avengers? Yeah. It, it has so much potential. But these characters, again, like she hulk they're not going to get the Tony Stark story. They're not going to get the Captain America story. They're going to get their story. Totally different. De- totally different views. And now they have to figure out how can I save the world. You know, that's that's the point. So it's about mentors and these new characters in their own unique way for saving the earth, basically. <clears throat> Even like Shang-Chi. It, it's a, it's a character that obviously that movie was just gonna reference the Ten Rings 
They're going to talk about Iron Man 3. They're going to talk about the fake version of the leader of the Ten Rings. And they brought back that actor who played that fake version. And they tied it in. He does, Shang-Chi doesn't necessarily need to be talking about the snap or Thanos. But he was just trying to show this was a character that needed its origin story to be told in a way. But watch him become Shang-Chi. Like he didn't want to do it. And it also showed a story that his sister wanted what her brother didn't want. And her father was just like, well, you're just a girl type thing. So if you that that's a potential stories that were inspired by some of the comic books. And but they wouldn't be able to do those stories if they kept going back to Thanos and trying to say what would all these new characters doing after the snap? Well, there's not a lot of time to tell that story in a movie. Or even on a show, like that would take up half of season one if they ever did a series like that. If you think about it, that, and that's why it's important. Well, Marvel was trying to make clear that this is going to be a totally different story, a different chapter, and all that. Even with like Moon Knight, too. Same thing. Uh, let's talk about uh, the the multiverse saga. So. That's 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 the movie Spider-Man No Way Home, Multiverse of Madness, which is Doctor Strange, uh Low Key, Moon Knight, and WandaVision. And what there are is these are like <clears throat> Phase Four was is pretty much focusing on the magical side of of the multiverse and the multiverse rules. So when you do No Way Home and Multiverse of Madness, they do the basic multiverse rules of how to what you can and can't do. And then Loki as well is a magical stuff because it's obviously all magic, but it also explains that this is that and and these are just the one way. That's just one way to do the mul- to get to a another Earth, another universe, or a different timeline. And it basically like even Mo- uh, Moon Knight too. It, it's just a different way. So when you do uh, M- Moon Knight. And like it's a they go they do a different way. There's a different set of rules. So compare Moon Knight to Thor Love and Thunder and Wakanda slash Black Panther. The rules is this. So when you die, death is not the end, it's just the next step. Moon Knight is like that as well. So when Jane Foster, a.k.a. Lady Thor, she died in battle, and she got to go to Valhalla. Valhalla is their version of heaven. Wakanda Forever, and even Black Panther 1, if you just to add that in, their thing is, death is not the end, there's an afterlife that exists. And just like Moon Knight, and uh, with the Black Panther series, the they have gods that are animals like for Black Panther it's the actual Black Panther is a god there is an actual spiritual animal that is a god that once exists walked on earth or other dimensions right same thing with Moon Knight look look how they they're dead but what they can do is choose vessels which is humans so in Wakanda forever right to pass that mantle of the Black Panther they show you how they do it right and that doesn't mean 
they're the actual Black Panther, like the spiritual animal, but they have harnessed the power of it. Same thing with Moon Knight. The you see how Moon Knight has three different personalities, and I think he has more, right? It's not because Moon Knight was is the cho- why, the reason why he was the chosen one is because of what he's gone through. He's gone through a split personality disorder, and the god of Moon Knight decided say he's he this guy fits is the one that can handle my power. His body is is his vessel, so he chose him. So you got different the, the different ways. So let's go to Wakanda Forever. Look at Namor. Namor they they use they're using a that they actually use actual mythology gods. Same thing with Moon Knight, but with with Namor it's more of his god, his spiritual spiritual animal god actually exists they showed him in Thor Love Thunder where you saw Zeus and they needed that thunderbolt you know to kill the god killer right and it it's not like he's dead but he's the, he's not dead like well Iron Man or like how people would die on earth that's not that's different death this is like they exist differently but they can use like again vessels so that's why Namor and everybody underneath worships that particular god and they go up by his power and his ability Namor was just the next one who was the chosen one to take that mantle there's other people who could take that mantle too and I'm sure they'll get that to that but I'm not going to get into like if Marvel can or can't because that's that's a whole different topic I'm just going by the storyline of the cinematic universe of Marvel Uh, so again this is just showing the one ways there's different ways to go into the multiverse and with Moon Knight Wakanda Forever Thor Love and Thunder they leave it where the rules is their loophole could be reincarnation so uh, imagine if the uh, actor Natalie Portman it's just this example. If she didn't want to continue her, you know, re-sign with Marvel and make more Lady Thor films or even a Disney Plus show, right? Well, and they had to get a new actor, right? Well, that's fine in the way. And this is not true. I'm just just an example again that they could actually just use the reincarnation rule with the with the multi, with uh Valhalla because it's a multiverse rule because you know with the magic you know they explain there's variants of those characters so and you see a lot in low key season 1 so there's that possibility uh with Again, with No Way Home and Multiverse of Madness is the basic way. Like, you know, there's there's multiple Peter Parkers that look different. You know, you had Andrew Garfield, Tobey Maguire, but the point of that was there's different. It's the same character, same Spider-Man, just they just look different. And each one has a Miles Morel, and they all have a Hobgoblin, Green Goblin, Dr. Osborne, Kingpin. So those are the things that you have to realize that those are variants. So they, again, those are just the magical ways to go through the multiverse or go back in time or make a new timeline. 
the the TVA as far as what they can and can't do yeah they can they got Sylvie she's female Loki but could they do that to Zeus if he broke the timeline I don't know I think not because Zeus is too powerful if, if, if you think about it so but again the multiverse saga is really good I'm enjoying it because again you got to see all three Spider-Mans in one movie but you also with the multiverse of madness you saw Ms. American Chavez which is another variant of Captain Marvel and she's not she's really not from that universe uh, 618 I think that's the number right I hope if not please correct me but she she now she's in that universe and she's somebody who is not part of that now she's canon to that into that earth so it's just a magical way to do that and they explain like there are rules and there is one variant of Doctor Strange who broke that rule and the Illuminati had to take care of it but again doesn't mean that happened to that Doctor Strange so that's more magical battles more mystical but I think in, in phase 5 we're going to get like with quantum mania we're going to learn more about the quantum realm and that's a more scientific way it's a more science way which is another way so so far really there's three ways uh the the, the two that they talked about is the magical way and the afterlife way the third one is the scientific way which is the quantum realm which you know I will definitely talk about later on in the future when they do the Crontomanium movie but for that purpose the again Marvel phase 4 is balancing two different stories and introducing so much and now let's talk about uh, Marvel's what if now Marvel's What If is another multiverse saga story, which is another magical thing because of the, you know, the Watchmen. Uh, there's, you know, somebody watching it, but they can't interfere, but one has. And this is like, what if this happened? What if that happened? And it just shows you what could happen. And There's zombies, there's, you know, an evil Doctor Strange, there's, there's a Spider-Man that wears Doctor Strange's uh, magical cloak, you know, it, it, you got so much, so I think the idea of it is that continuing on, there's going to be, multi, the, the multiverse saga is still continuing, and it's going to be odd it may not make sense at first but the the multiverse is is not supposed to make sense it's supposed to be kind of confusing and it's supposed to catch you off guard and that's what they're going to do with that but again for them to do that story is basically they need to keep away from Thanos now does that mean they're not never going to use Thanos? No, I just think right now they want to focus on another different villains besides Thanos. They'll get back to Thanos one day. But you got to think about Kang the Conqueror is the new big bad villain. And obviously he's totally different from Thanos. And then, you know, people are wanting to see like Doctor Doom but for, if you won't be able to see that if you keep always going back to Thanos so it's very important to Marvel now is to mention Thanos but do it in the right way not just to say it to say it to make it the main circle of it uh, now 
let's talk about the Marvel specials. Now, he had I Am Groot, Werewolf by Night, the Guardian of the Galaxy Holiday Special. And what I, let me just review, I'm just going to review what I think about the Marvel specials presentation is I think now uh, when you go to theaters and see a Marvel film, right? I think now that the post credits where it's mid credit uh, end credit scenes you know how we all stay in the movie theaters and wait until all the credits ends I think now that's reserved for already established Marvel characters and the Marvel special presentation specials are for characters who are not well known but you can do a special and introduce them and explain where they're from and their background and build them up to be fan favorite that's I think that's the goal of it and it does they could do a Disney plus original movie Marvel Studios and it can be definitely connect to the MCU obviously and but it doesn't have to be in theaters now so here's an example uh, the I am Groot it was a short okay so Groot is a character that is not gonna they they did it where they show what were Groot, Groot was a baby and a kid doing cause if you look at the Garden Galaxy holiday special he's kinda older kind of in a, a young team type thing it was just a short film but it was funny to watch but if you think about it now this is something they can do like let's see they got uh you got valentine's day you got easter right imagine if there was the if the easter bunny existed in the marvel cinematic universe well they can do an I am group because you know maybe there's a planet where there's a literally a talk of bunny that does Easter right like drops Easter eggs I mean it can be done like the possibility of that that's what uh, a Marvel special presentation could give opportunities for that company to do uh, werewolf by night see this is a prime example of where would that care if they just put that character in a in a post credit scene or end credit scene uh, the character werewolf by night it, people wouldn't recognize it and that's a not a it's a it's a wreck a, a werewolf the werewolf man is well established but not the Marvel Cinematic Universe version because there was really no hints of if he existed or not we only just assumed you did now because of the Blade movie that they're coming out with for the MCU. But there, if you really look at all the all the shows that they came out with now, or the movies, or even in the last couple of phases, there was really no chance to do that. Not not in like Iron Man one, two, or three, or nothing like that. But not even in Doctor Strange the first Doctor Strange film but with uh, Loki season 1 the TVA mentioned it that's the only part they can do with it but people want to understand like how long has the werewolf man existed and so a Marvel special presentation like this which they release it like the week of Halloween or whatever or two weeks before Halloween I forget but it that was their chance because if people are like, oh, I really want to watch this. Like, I didn't know this was out. And that's really cool. They have a werewolf now in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. They're like, oh, I'll subscribe to the Disney Ch Plus channel uh, app thing, right? Streaming service. <laughs> and they'd watch it, you know, just because it came out last year. But, I mean, there's still time to rewatch that. Because that that whole presentation... You know, didn't didn't it stayed within the confine of 
the the that character, you know, the thing and other ones, vampires. But again, it, it you know, they didn't uh, have Captain America, uh, Sam Wilson show up. They didn't have She Hulk show up. They didn't have Doctor Strange, Spider Man, nothing like that. But I think it it was just the uh, idea of it. But if if they would have po- put him in any, like any post credit scenes. Like why would why would they put him in the post credit scenes in Wakanda Forever or Thor Love and Thunder? It just wouldn't make sense. Uh it just wouldn't because people wouldn't get it. It wouldn't be people wouldn't understand who it was, but this one they can understand and they can build them up as a fan favorite. That's the whole point, I think. Some of these characters are not fan favorite. Like Cosmo. Like Cosmo, have seen him, seen her, but they haven't really got to know her or understand it. They just thought, oh, she, this is the dog in a spacesuit, and it was captured by the collector, and that's it. Like nothing in purpose, but this holiday special helped it and helped people really like her and be like, oh, you know what? I want to see more of this character. And so, what I think is, like I'm going back now to the point of mid-credit scenes and in, and in and end-credit scenes, like post-credit wise, are going to be reserved for more well-established, like Deadpool, the X-Men, Wolverine. So, here's an example of what they can do. So we know we're getting a Fantastic Four movie for the MCU. Now, imagine if they did a Marvel special special presentation of the Silver Surfer. Imagine it was a, a a prequel. Imagine it was a prequel. And this this is just a example. This is not really happening. But imagine that, right? And they were like, "This the Silver Surfer thing is a special presentation, but it's a prequel." They could do a they can do a a a film, a whole film of it, and make it exclusively for Disney Plus. And people would that would create buzz like, "Oh, I want to watch this," or you know people will see the reviews of it and be like it's a really good movie and then people want to subscribe to the Disney Plus streaming service so it's a good business move and it would help but also you're like well isn't that character always established because they have a live action Silver Surfer and the older Fantastic Four yes but I also think that this gives them an excuse to kill two birds with one stone type thing because they're like okay so this happened and then this and then the Fantastic Four movie happened and you know that sooner or later they're going to meet up so it would build the hype up of the meeting now do they you know am I saying they're going to do that no but it's just an idea of it like it would help or even if it was just the, if they did a Silver Surfer special, Marvel special and it was after that film it would still work too of course because if the film does really great and then they come out with that special presentation of Silver Surfer people again would want to subscribe to the Disney Plus streaming service to see continuous of that story from that movie so I think to me that's what these Marvel specials are for because there's going to be a lot of new characters that Marvel owns now or haven't even touched yet that they got to build up and hype up better and post credit scenes now is just not going to help because people are not going to know who they are so that's why I think they're doing that uh, overall I think this now what they're going forward with again 
phase four to me was great. I think this is what they needed. And this is going to set up the new blueprint for the next Marvel phases on and on. So I definitely like it. I Yeah, there's some stuff that they need to work on. But again, this is not about me talking about their flaws. I'm just saying as a story what their decisions they have made. It, it does make sense to me. So that's my review. Uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Great Talk and Entertainment Office channel. Hit that notification button. Subscribe. Share with your friends and family.